Alright guys, a bit of a, a quick and lazy project update for Graphic APRS Modem, which uh, has gained a bit of attention, I think mainly through a single Reddit post that's about 30 subscribers. Uh, you'll notice things are a bit different around here. I'm not aiming for fame or advertising money. Um, very irregular that I appear in the videos. I want the star of the show to be the project and not me. Um, so this project, if you have been around for a while, it's largely recycled from something I worked on for a couple of years actually, um, with only the differences that are required to, to do this one, which is mainly more I.O. Uh, because it's a remote control um, and no MP3 decoder chip, so I've only got basic um, beeps and buzzes from a piezo speaker for this one. Um, got some outputs there, they would require um, transistors and relays to actually turn something on and off, uh, flush your toilet remotely or whatever it's going to do over APRS, um, which in my case I plan to use a, a handheld radio to send messages with codes embedded into that. You'll notice this uh, intro is familiar and the clock. I've written a graphics library, so why not reuse it? Uh, the clock appears because the APRS program wants a position fix, so uh, this remains here until it's satisfied, it's got a good location, and then uh, currently will automatically uh, switch over to the APRS program and then do nothing because in this take it's not connected to a radio, but I've got good light here. Uh, it's very hard to make a video at the moment because of the, the staying at home thing and I can't control the noise here, my neighbours are at home, I can't control their noise, so it's about 2am uh, right now. Um, in uh, the next segment will be connected to a, a Yaesu FT8900 speaker output. Uh, the thing can transmit and verify that it uh, did the thing that you asked it to do. It only has one button even though it's got a lot of I.O. because uh, it's a remote controlled thing so it'll have SD card configuration. There it's got the position fix. It'll wait there for a little while. Um, and uh, anything you want to do in real time will be done uh, with a command in a message that you send to it over the air. So um, one button to do something and maybe a soft power button, but I'm not even sure uh, it'll have a power button because it's something you'd leave on to watch traffic. So it's switched over, so this segment we've got it connected to a speaker output and it's about to uh, switch over again uh, for the second time to the, uh, the graphic modem program. Um, so I guess it proves that my APIs were of use because I could quite easily uh, write for the thing without worrying about graphics and text strings and all that sort of thing again. Um, you'll probably be surprised if you know what you're looking at and you're in uh, America or something like that at the amount of traffic we have in Australia. Imagine a bunch of repeaters and then about 20 people on the network. Um, so here we are, I'm just going to talk you through what I see. Uh, a, status, a status message from a repeater, I guess telling you the frequency that it's on and uh, DMR capability. Um, there are, if you don't know what APRS is, heaps of uh, different packet types. It could be weather, um, a, mess a personal message uh, to a, a recipient. This one's called a mic e packet, which is encoded. It's the hardest thing to, to write and it's downhill from here once you support mic e. The top compass there is the bearing and distance in relation to me, uh, for the, the distance station from here, and uh, the bottom compass needle, if the station was currently moving, uh, the course and speed would be sent, so I can display that too. So that's their own uh, course you know, in relation to north. Um, so if they were driving in a circle around me, both uh, needles would spin. Um, I've just uh, done some you know, cancelling. If, if the speed is zero, then the bearing is invalid anyway. Uh, this will be a position beacon with a comment, which is always printed at the bottom of the screen there for whatever room I have. The icons up there, I have there's hundreds of them and I haven't drawn them all. I've done the car and the, the most common ones are house. And if I haven't drawn it yet, you'll just get this antenna. Um, it's hard to draw a bunch of 16 by 16 pixel icons and make them pretty. I'll get to it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so 
this had a clear objective from the start. I wanted to uh, graphically display information, uh, you know, as I wanted to see it, partially inspired by my uh, Yaesu FT3D, but uh, the, the radios with built-in APRS functionality are generally similar in the way they present data. So this is a position packet with the time, so that's Zulu time, and I'll eventually convert that to local time uh, for display, so you never see UTC time. Um, it's already got some configuration on SD card and uh, the uh, time offset is already one of those configurations which is plus 10 for me. Um, so if you were to go look up now on uh, APRS fly or something like that where one of these stations were like VK4AN um, you could actually reverse the bearing by 180 degrees and find the distance on a map and locate me so I've faked my position and what you'll end up at is our uh, town clock um, N0 call, that's illegal uh, it's an improperly configured modem at the other end um, that's a default call sign um, it's been running for a year and it appears uh, no one cares I think that is actually a legitimate uh, license holder just hasn't configured his modem properly um, bearing time again, so another uh, position with time packet. There are something like 30 odd different types of packets. So if it's a weather packet, I've uh, pulled the temperature out and displayed the temperature, but it could be a lot more like rainfall, um, barometric air pressure and whatnot. Um, APRS, I'll, I'll do a, a different video explaining the differences in hardware between this and the last project rather than going over everything and uh, a little bit about APRS which is a, a shit show um, somebody's written a whole master's thesis on why APRS is a shit show written over a couple of decades by different programmers with different mindsets um, okay this is yeah pure status text the ham hud is the hardware there, like a little advertisement, it's stuck on the end, which is um, ham head-up display from the same station as before. There's only one person around here using that uh, N0 call default sign, so I always know that it's him. <laughs> um, yeah, but APRS, yeah, it's, it's a funny thing. Mikey, they've worked real hard on uh, compressing a bunch of data into a, a very small payload. And then in other areas, you can have fixed width fields that it's padded with spaces, which offsets all that work, and uh, it's just a funny thing. You can have to... <laughs> other uh, times, Mikey requires you to go backwards for a stream. <laughs> if, if you run into this data and uh, information type and it flags that it's Mikey data, you have to go backwards and then interpret the um, destination field as latitude instead. Uh, which is not hard because you're only buffering uh, 255 bytes maximum, but it's it's just a stupid way to write a, a packet protocol. Um, I'm going to say it. I could do better myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah, okay. uh, but it's integrated into radios now, so, I mean, it's never changing. We're stuck with this shit. Um, you kind of like it the more you write for it, but, yeah. An object packet, that's um, VK2ARS, reporting on the location of this repeater, um, VK2RTH. So a third party can uh, report that, that an object is here or an item. And the bearing and distance will be for that object rather than the sending station. Um, and yeah, it's telling you that it the frequency that it operates, the offset, and that it supports the AC fusion and the 91.5 will be a, a tone for FM uh, analog. Um, yeah, so I'm sure you've noticed by now if you're in a different part of the world that uh, traffic is very slim here. Maybe because of the virus thing, less people driving around. Repeat a status message from the repeater itself, DMR capability and the frequency again. So the whole idea of APRS is uh, you, you can just watch and within a, a particular uh, time cycle, uh, 10 to 30 minutes, you're supposed to get um, information about all the, the services around you. So um, 
I guess it, it's an emergency thing. Now it's used as basically tracking, vehicle tracking on a map. Uh, wasn't the original intention uh, of the inventor. Um, yeah, there's probably more I, I should be saying to narrate this that I can't think of in a single take, which is how I want to do it. I've done the audio for this several times and uh, never been happy, but this is going to be the last one. Um, yeah, yeah, difficult to make videos because just, yeah, noise. Okay, we've pulled the temperature out of this one. There is more available, but um, several different uh, weather stations send different formats. So this one I haven't specifically supported. That's the raw data. I mean, if you knew, you could actually make sense of that. Um, yeah, you'll have the degrees. T54 will be degrees Fahrenheit there, so you know, I've got to support. There are a few known ones in the APRS uh, protocol document, and I just haven't got them all. These are a couple of um, my key packets that arrived you know, a few minutes apart, so that they are related to each other. And a bit of the construction photos, the layout of the, the bottom board with the DS pick, uh, the GPS board, which is only painted because that's delicate, and then the IO board, which has your shift registers, extra shift registers than uh, the, the previous iteration of this hardware for extra IO. Um, yeah, you see those uh, header connectors on the bottom board there aren't straight, and that's because these cheap JCAR boards warp whenever you populate them. So a part of this framework that I always builds to stick the thing together aims at pulling them straight again. So uh, it is my aim to do some PCB CAD and clone these boards. I don't even know the, I don't need the holes that are drilled in them because I surface mount through mount components on the top. So I could do um, high quality fiberglass boards cheaper than I've been buying these for. So for a little work, I should get a, a lot of benefit. Um, and that's about all for this one, but stay tuned. See us.